Back to my so rare journey, if you don't know what this is, it's basically a series where I go through right from the rookie league right to where we are now on so rare, documenting every time I find something eventful or helpful where I can help you guys out. And it's just a bit of fun to see whether the platform's worth it. So far, I think it's fair to say it's definitely worth it from where I'm sitting. So if you do want to get involved, you know, message me, I can help you get set up. But let's get into it this week. So you may be able to see here that there's two rewards and, you know, they... Normally, I've only ever seen one there, so let's see what's happened, okay? So the completed week just finished, 194. Overall, you can see in D4, I didn't, I wasn't competitive at all, finished, you know, 1,000 and 3,000. But then D5, the first week of Global D5 being out, I finished 31st out of, I think it was 2,700 people, so an absolute win for me. I'm not saying I'm incredible at the game or anything, it's just, you know, I was one of those guys that was prepared to put more money in before the new supply came out. Like, you know, I got in at the 10 out of a thousands rather than getting in at the hundreds out of a thousands because it'll be cheaper. I think that will, you know, help me in the long run, but you know, it's yet to be seen, obviously. So who played? So we got this new um, Orlean from AS Monaco. He put in a 59 with no decisive action. So, you know, although he had no decisive actions, I think a 59 is very solid. I can probably rely on in most weeks. Sorry, um, Erkan Kara, really, really impressed with this guy. He was relatively cheap compared to the rest of the team. And look, a goal and an assist with an 84. It was a 91 when I checked. And um, he's obviously been knocked down by Opta for I think a couple of big chances missed. But again, loving that. Uh, Victor Wanyama, so reliable, so cheap. If like... If you do have an MLS or an American team, go check this guy out. Like, you know, I picked him up for when he was at Celtic, obviously, but he's just putting in massive scores every week and, you know, is really cheap. Uh, Rasmus Christensen, so the most eventful player of the week, he was on um, negative, that would be on about 25 at one point, and then the 81st minute, he absolutely rocketed one into the top corner from the edge of the box. So that was fantastic. I really think this guy, I know I kind of pumped him up last episode, but I just feel this guy is going to be the best scorer in the under-23s division for a defender, um, and possibly for everyone, really. Um, the reason for it, he's just so attacking. He really does well. Like In this week, he obviously got a decisive action, which helped him, but... The reason why he scored so badly is because he two, had two big chances missed and a shot on goal. And it's like, okay, so if he should have had a, you know, big chances missed is supposed to be when you've missed a chance, you clearly should have scored. So in Opta's mind, he should have had three goals here. And it's like, if I've got a player that's getting into, to, into you know, shooting positions that much and he's got assists, I think he's got four goals this season or at least four decisive actions in five games or something similar. And, you know, Salzburg are clearly have the best team in the league, you know, should keep a couple of clean sheets on top. You know, I'm really looking forward to what he can put out. And, you know, I was happy with a 60. Hopefully we can shoot higher in the next week. And Thomas did Leon. Um, yeah, not a lot to say really. Just a keeper that scored 50 while conceding two. You know, I'm happy with that. But I have brought in a new goalkeeper who we'll get to later. So, who have we won? Or do we check what it is? We'll check what it is first. So, 18 was a tier one and then a tier two um, limited. So, you know, when you think about it, I scored 338 points. I'm only getting a tier two. I do feel that's a bit under underweighted, let's say. Um, generally, I'll talk about a new reward structure that I've been thinking of or a new division structure that I've been thinking of in later episodes. But for now, let's see what we've won. I'm going to be, you know, happy regardless because I've waited so long. This is my first reward on the game. And yeah, I'm just buzzing. So I got the 0.01 ETH and go to Sakai. I actually think I've seen him. I hope he's not a DMP. Um, before we go check him out, um, if you check my global D4 scores. And the reason I didn't get 0.02 ETH was because of a DMP. I got a bit screwed by that. But the rest of the team performed well. Stanislav's still coming off the bench, which is annoying. Um, let's see my cards. Uh, he's not there yet. See, I'm new to this reward system. I don't really know what's going on. But who have I picked up is quite important. So, Philip Cohn. He is the under 23s goalkeeper for Salzburg. So what you can do there is obviously you can stack him. In, you know, I've just showed the reward pool and how it's very kind of top heavy. If you if you win, in the, if you're in the top 18 and get a tier one star or some ETH, you're happy. But below that, it's a bit naff, really. If you can do it every week, sure, but you've probably got a 10% chance. So, you know, you really kind of want to stack your players here. I know it's been talked about before, but, you know, that means having a goalkeeper and a defender from the same um, team so that if they get a clean sheet, they both get a clean sheet, scores are better. Um, 
so you know I've gone after him I paid well above for him I, I didn't really care like I just wanted him on the books I think he'll make back his money you know within time as long as Sal's, as long as he stays in the team and it was a weird one but I thought do you know what the reserves keep is 21 as well so he would also fit in so I picked him up you know 58 quid's probably a lot for a limited reserve keeper but you know it's just to be safe at the end of the day he'll be worth 350 if he gets dropped so you know it's just to net off hedge against each other Mugin Barisha. So Barisha, I know from, I think it's the German under 23s when I was watching at the Euros. He's very good. But um, I watched the Salzburg game and he was on free kicks and scored late. He's just coming back from an injury. So I really see that price going up. Ki Sung Young, ex Celtic. We got Seku Koita. Um, I butcher the names, don't care. He's out injured, but when he does play, he gets like so many decisive actions. It's basically equal to one a game. I see him basically being the Noah Lang of the under 23s, and he's got more years left. So, you know. Yes, he's injured at the moment, but if you're one of those people that's looking to make money on the game or your strategy's capital appreciation, get a rare, super rare, limited of this guy. I really feel it's one of those no-loss situations. Like, he's 21, he should be the starter, and when he starts, he gets big scores. Like, he's only going to go up once he comes back to full fitness, and I don't think he's one of those guys that everyone knows about. It's not like when Van Dijk got injured, he didn't drop in price. Like, this guy's actually, you know, not, not priced fairly for what he could score, so... You know, that's a bit of advice for you and, you know, make your own decisions and, you know, take your own risk preferences because, you know, I've been wrong before, so. <laughs> okay, so I found my player. It's Sakai from the Vistal Kobe in the K League. Overall, looking at his last solds, you know, gone for £36, £64, £42, £71. That's actually so much higher than I thought it would be. I'm really, really happy with that. And um, when I start building into the Asian leagues, you know, I'll start to look at him. I'm in a dilemma at the moment because, as you may have seen on Twitter and other places, you know, PSG are coming out soon. Messi cards have been minted. They're about to be listed any time, probably this week. And I'm a massive Messi fan. Well, I really want one of the limiteds. Of course, if they're too expensive, I won't be able to get one. But it's one of those things where even if he's not good value for money in terms of SO5, in terms of the game, you know, collectability and just enjoyment I would get out of the card, I really want one. So, you know, I'm saving up my money for that. I'll probably have to deposit some more. Um, but overall, that's kind of where my where my plans go. And if that fails, then I'm going to branch into the Asian League, Champion America across D5. As I said, I want to be the whale of D5. So far, it's looking good for me. You know, finishing 31st this week is great signs for what's coming. And um, I've stacked up my defence for the coming weekends of Salzburg. Salzburg were absolutely electric when I watched them. So, yeah, long may that continue. And again, Again, thanks for so much support recently um, on here, on Twitter, even on Instagram. People have been messaging me saying they're loving the content. You know, some big names as well. Where like, I, obviously, I don't really care if you're a big name or a small name or you have a big gallery, small gallery. Like, if you're sending nice comments like that, thank you so much. It really helps me make these videos. And look, I'm just loving being part of the Sura community and, you know, gaining off my football knowledge. So cheers, all the best, and uh, hope to see you in the D5 leaderboards.